All right, welcome to chapter five, mandatory equipment and supplies. So now you've been overwhelmed with uh, the documents and so forth, but at least you have a better grasp as to doing that. So let's talk about some uh, components to help you be successful and to, uh, you know, help you do what you'll be doing. So um, this section, we're going to talk about equipment, office supplies, shipping accounts and supplies, and some follow-up items for you. First and foremost, your biggest investment as far as equipment, other than your cell phone and vehicle, is a printer. Now, most of you may have a printer, so hear me out. If you have a laser printer, work with what you got if you can't. That's the right printer. You're going to have reduced page or cost per page. It's going to be faster. You can, they usually handle a lot more volume. A color laser is not needed. Let me talk about that in a minute. The wrong printer is an inkjet printer. I know Shaq is all out there with Epson doing commercials, and I almost bought it because Shaq is a cool dude. But even with the technology as advanced as it's become, longevity-wise, the ink, I don't care what they tell you, will fade over time. It's not 100% water and moisture proof. And you'll be surprised that a lot of lenders, when they warehouse this loan package, and they scan it, of course, but at some point they keep it in a box in a warehouse and are, you know, armed guards and everything because many lenders are in the business to have that loan sold once, twice, three, four, 20 times. And so your documents that were printed are going to be traveling. So over time, inkjet is not going to be the way to go. And a lot of times I can tell if it's an inkjet. So I know some very few notaries will argue that, but you'll quickly learn that, you know, you'll get you know, in trouble for doing that. But um, the other thing is your ink costs So each out of house and home. You're printing a lot. There is no, when you start doing a high volume, ink jets just in each out of house and home. The cost of the ink alone after your first, you know, 20 loan packages, you could put a bottle of cheap laser printer. So, um, so let's just move forward. All right. These are the two most talked about, um, brand and models. They have a couple that are newer and changing, but these are the ones that now that the inventory has been replenished, you might be able to find them on Amazon, newegg.com and so forth. But let's just talk about these. Again, you can use your own. Brenda and I both own these. Um, Brenda, you have a 5200, right? Yeah. But did you also get a 6200? I did not. I just you have two lasers, right? Um, actually, no. Your brother has one of my lasers. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I do you had to. Yeah. Um, the so these are pretty much the same. I think we might have a picture. If not, you could just write them down. So the model, the DWT, D means duplex, W means wireless, T means tray. These are kind of hard to find under these particular models right now because everyone wants to become a signing agent. And so brother loves us, by Burke loves us, NNA loves us, everybody's making money, right? But you can actually buy these as the DW model. So drop the T. And that basically means it's a single tray version of that printer. The tray that you could add on, you can buy separately. So if you want to piecemeal it, you can do that. Um, but the 5200, if you can, and you're fortunate to find the one that has the T in it, it's going to include two trays, the tray, um, now you got the manual tray, but the one that's below it will hold half of a ream of paper. And the one at the bottom will hold a full ream of paper. Um, it's limited at 8,000 max page count of toner use, and it prints 42 pages per minute. Brenda, the wizard that she is with, uh, comparing costs Averaged out just a little bit over a penny. And again, that's toner and drum and so forth. Was that paper use as well? I can't remember. Yes. It was. Okay. So that's your average operating cost. Now to the right, the 6200, the printer's roughly the same size, but the tray that it comes with on both, they each hold a full ream of paper. So that's your big difference between the two. The other is the monthly duty cycle. Don't spend the extra money for that reason because the 5200 is very ample. Um, I lean towards the 6200 because of the max page count of toner use. 
and then it prints a little faster, but not enough for you, you know, to go do that. Now, because of that, you're getting more toner cartridge use. That's going to lower your per page cost, but we're a fraction of a penny. So it just depends. I think really the dividing or decisive factor would be that second tray, whether you want a full ream or a partial. Now with the 6200, you can add a third tray if you want. So these printers usually average, I think the 6200 is 350 or below. The other one's 299 or below. Office Depot several times throughout the year has a $50 off on their price. Uh, but these are the two biggest ones that are popular amongst the notary community. Um, Jake, I there will you, say we're going to talk sure. about the, the HP models, too, in the next couple of slides. But okay. um, I know that at least one or two people in the class were, attended a, a webinar that Michelle put, did. And so I'm going to throw this out. Michelle Riley, our bond lady dot org, our the bond lady dot org. She um, had a, a man come from a lease company. And you can actually rent printers that are HP comparable to this. You might want to look into that just to see what your cost would be too. Right. And then especially with the lease, I mean, when you start getting a lot of volume, the lease is probably going to be the way to go because exactly. Lexmark, you get their business class and it's like you hit the printing button while you grab your purse or if you got a man purse like for me with the dudes. By the time I get that in my wall and everything, it's already done. You know, you just print the docs and go. So definitely consider all your options. Um, do what works for you. Now, if you already have a uh, printer in your arsenal, at home, excuse me, at home, most of the time they're just single tray. You can use that as you save up and start turning a profit. Um, but your loan packages, most of the time, are going to have letter and legal size. You can go through certain apps uh, that it's a page separator that will take all your letter and your legal and separate it so you can print them. The downfall is, is if it's 100% accurate in doing so. And then do you have one of those hiring parties that says, do not take these documents out of order? Then you're going to have to assemble them back in. But, you know, I mean, you could certainly start with that. So don't go out and spend too much money too quick. Um, but these printers are pretty affordable and they're a write-off and you can use it for personal use. They're wireless. So your family members can use it. So anyways, enough about brother. They do not, uh, we don't get any credit or any, um, any incentive for saying that we just believe in the brand. Um, where to find a two drawer printer. You can go to office Depot or Staples. Um, I know a lot in the Texas market and some people online, I'll kind of just go in their local market, but office Depot and a lot of their stores, they don't have the T version, but the 6,200, a lot of them, it's just sitting there waiting for someone to come get, you can order it online, pick up in store, you can have it shipped to you and whatever. So, uh, with the current pandemic limiting a lot of other stores, office Depot seems to have them. All right. Um, if you want the additional drawer and because you're having to piecemeal it, these are the model numbers um, and roughly the cost. You will spend a little bit more than you would if you got the extra tray and the, you know, the full unit. Um, but, you know, supply and demand. Where to find a two drawer printer as far as HP. Now, this is a model series that... Uh, Brenda and I are loyal to, to brother, but we just thought, let's look at alternatives. And then she she's very familiar with the uh, HP line. But we're like, wow, these are really good contenders. And they pretty much do the same thing. So model 404 or 405. And again, HP usually has several versions of each one. Um, and then you can add a bigger uh tray that'll hold more paper for 140. So total is 410, not bad. Now, again, this is the pricing. We did this several months ago. It may be different now, um, but yeah. again, use your options. Um, one thing I was going to mention, um, oh, we're gonna get to the scanners here in a minute, but a lot of people will go and see specials on the all-in-ones. The all-in-ones, the scanner part, and my all-in-one is usually when the you know it's got the lid on top of the scanner. You can fax and all that good stuff. The scanners are not hardy to stand up to the wear and tear of a loan package. So when you get a standalone scanner, 
they, that's what they're built for, you know. Uh, but again, if the deal's so good, I'm not, you know, you whatever works for you. Brenda, do you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, that I felt like I had finally arrived when I added a, a document scanner to my my uh, ensemble. Right. right. And, and I know we talked about this, but I'm going to... Uh, my brain fog. You do have the Epson 500, right? No. Oh, no. You, you know, start the Fuji Jitsu. I, I wouldn't spend whatever it was at that time. No, I have a uh, a brother scanner and I have a uh, a Xerox scanner. Okay. Yeah. that I, And I bought both of them. The Xerox was new in box and I bought it for $50 on Marketplace. And then the little brother that that was listed used on marketplace and I paid 50 for it. I, so anyway, and we're going to talk about that too yeah. later too about the marketplace and little gems that miss Brenda shared with me. And I'm telling you, I got to steal and I'll talk about that later. Um, if you do have the one drawer printer, um, you can still do the work around, especially when there's a shortage um, as we mentioned, Notary or the page separator, Notary Rotary actually has one. When you subscribe to their service, I think it's $9 a month or you can pay for it annually, but they include that for their members. And most people say it, it works pretty good, but again, you should always double check. Um, you can also load the legal paper into your multi-purpose tray. So if you know you're going to have, you know, print legal pages all of a sudden. It's like 30 pages. Well, um, your manual, that's the one you fold down, like usually envelopes go through and so forth. If you put that in there, it's going to say, hey, we're assuming this is legal. So that's a, a good workaround for the time being. Actually, the the for the printers that we, we showed, they work, this will work for them. But like a smaller brother or a smaller HP, you don't have that big, a multi-purpose tray. So just wanted to throw that in. Don't stress yourself trying to use it if it's not there. Gotcha. Good point. All right. Uh, so again, Amazon, you can buy this is what the tray looks like. It's plug and play. You just lift your printer up and drop it on. You do have to change some of the settings, but as far as equipment and hardware, there's nothing you have to do. It just stacks on top. All right, so another thing you'll need to consider uh, regarding the computer and Adobe is PCs have been chosen over Apple for compatibility for many years. However, modern software accommodates both. So if you have an Apple product and you're loyal to Apple, I'm not loyal to Apple, but I do appreciate you investing because I do have stock with Apple. Um, you obviously want to choose what's right for you. Um, if you have a brother printer, they're... They've worked on it, but you're going to need a little bit more assistance getting any MacBook or handing Apple to work with it at first. But once you get it, it goes without a hitch. Um, you are going to need Adobe Acrobat Reader, um, and that's free uh, because most documents are going to be in PDF. Now, if you have something through um, the Google Docs or the Google plethora of things they offer, that's fine. But I've just noticed sometimes it just gets distorted. So go ahead and download Adobe Reader, which most of you already have anyways. Virus protection is a must. And this isn't a fresh open wound for my company. And I'll just say that on a Ron. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Um, I'm trying to say this because <laughs> we don't know where this is going to go yet, but um my signer, who I thought I was talking to, was the estranged son who act as parents' email. They're at odds with each other. And the good son, who's going to be the receiving end as the uh, power attorney appointee, he he didn't know who I was, and it was mass confusion. And I said, well, I think your email's being hacked, so let's try something else. And they wanted to use the WhatsApp app, and I'm like, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't have a teenager or somebody to help me, so I'm like, look, we're going to do it this way, you know, whatever. Well... Um, we started getting a weird email incoming to us. I'm like, okay, so I called my email provider. Force Brood Attack has been on our server, our email server. So for me, I have two-step authentication set up. I've got virus protection. I've got malware. So I'm telling you, I'm preaching right now. You must have these. Hold on. You must have these. Take you to church. Um, 
because if you are the cause of that and they could trace it back to you, well, you remember those letters that you get from time to time? Let's just say your credit card company says we had a security breach and blah, blah, blah. And your information may or may not have been leaked. Go here or whatever. Was well, a signing agent or is a signing service. We did over almost 6,000 orders last year. I'd have to send that to everybody because of one notary. So your ENO would not be enough by the time it takes that. So you need to have that. And most of you have this. It's common sense. I get that. But if you don't, use the one of your choice, but make sure it does both malware and virus. Some of them still are separate and don't incorporate both. Uh, but there's no exceptions to that. All right. Fast internet. You do not have to have the one gigabyte. I know people want to brag about it. And those of you who have it, I don't want to talk to you. But I have 25 down at my current residence in my office. I have 100 down. But if you have anything over five, three to five is fine. Of course, that's on the low end. But depending where you live, just because you're going to have large attachments. So if you can get those documents now, don't go spend the extra money. There's no need. But you do need to have reliable internet. Otherwise, a download or an upload could take forever. And you know, time is money. So, but regardless, your connection must be secure. If you're on a Wi-Fi network that's wireless, you need to have a really strong encryption with your password. Um, you may have a mobile hotspot either from your phone or if you have a separate device, those are generally secure. However, make sure that it's not an open one that anybody can sign on without a password. Public Wi-Fi or shared devices are a big no. No Starbucks. No FedEx office, no cafeteria, no college, nothing. Because again, and no hospitals, as a colleague that we know went on and did, and their phone got hacked. Mm -hmm. um, cell phone with data. Consider upgrading your data plan if you're using your phone as a hotspot or it's your primary means. Um, when I go into Deep East Texas and visit family, I'm on my cell phone plan and I always get the pop up. You surpassed two gigabytes. I just turn my email hey, on. Greg, I think you just said something confusing. The the person at the hospital was actually using her her laptop and the hospital Wi Fi. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. The so open Wi Fi. Cell cell phone data is good. Hospital Wi Fi is evil. Yes. And Starbucks and colleges and anything like that where basically if if you are able to sign on that network and no password was required hotels too by the way then you are in the danger zone i don't care what anybody tells you um i can find somebody to hack you just to prove that how easy it is all right uh cell phone with data again if you are using your data plan as your primary means to operate your business, then you might want to consider doing that. Some of you still may be on the unlimited. I understand that most people when the contract expires or you change one phone on your plan, a lot of people are no longer being grandfathered. They're now being throttled that they don't have the unlimited, which I hate they're doing that. But anyways, but it's a great backup. If your internet ever goes down or power goes, which most of us, the next 24, 36 hours may incur that with this big, strong, vast winter system. Um, a shredder or shredding service, anything that you print should never be put in the trash. If it's your confirmation from your hiring party and they're like, oh, well, this canceled. Well, yeah, it may not have social security numbers and driver's licenses, but it has something unique that no one else would know. And that is, that Jake was going to meet Brenda in uh, Austin at University of Texas at this time and that date because Brenda loves the Longhorns. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. Her her uh, family they go to A and M and Texas A and M big rival. Big rivals. Yeah. Um, but anyways, if it's printed and it's something in relation to your assignment, you need to shred it. Now, if you want to have like a, a big um, something you under lock and key and just let it build and just maybe you have a shred day, you know, on a lazy day, like some of us will have, or maybe you have a shredding service that comes by. That's fine. Just so long as no one can readily get that and then look at it. So, but if it does have identifying information, you need to, to shred that as soon as you can put it this way. Some of you probably had a notary come to your home or you will in the near future and, you probably be upset if they, you know, the 
the notary little Johnny, her little Johnny had a soccer party and your dockets are sent on the printer and they wanted to color on them and whatever, you know what I mean? So just be respectful and, and don't be in possession of that if it's not going to be used. All right. Um, next moving right along is your scanner. Um, you're going to hear the term scan backs or fax backs. That usually is interchangeable in the modern day. However, you may still have someone that wants you to fax documents. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, or if not, let's talk about it now. So faxing can be accommodated through third-party services. It's too expensive now to get a landline and just get a fax machine. So use your scanner. Um, I like to use myfax.com. It's like, I think it's $5 a month, maybe 10. And I have a toll-free fax. Incoming faxes are unlimited. Not that I ever get any, uh, but outbound after so many pages, it's like 10 cents a page. Usually when you are having to do fax backs, it's only a portion of the closing package and not all of it. Um, but again, you'll still scan it, upload it to your preferred third-party vendor, and then they will do the faxing for you. Um, if I ever had anybody who was adamant about doing that, I would just say, hey, I can send this encrypted. Maybe I have a full version of Adobe and I could password protect it and just say, I'm going to have to scan it anyways. Would this be acceptable? And almost all the time, they're okay with that. So, um, but you will need a scanner right along with your printer in order to do uh, a lot of signings because it is a frequent request. And again, the standalone document scanners do work best than your all-in-ones. Um, here's a few uh, model lines that we recommend. Uh, Fujitsu has like literally been around forever. When I was a signing agent, starting in the early 2000s, I had that uh, scan snap line. I think I still have it somewhere, but I don't use it. Um, this next one is the Fujitsu Scan Zen. They no longer make it, but Brenda's had one before. They're hardy, and you could find them sometimes on, on the used market like... Um, uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace and five, mm -hmm. five Mile, whatever they're called, and all that good stuff, right? Right. I can never remember their names. I'm on there, but I'm never on there. <laughs> the Epson Workforce ES400 and the ES500 were the top two. Epson just came out with the 550 or 580. I'm not sure. Um, I have not seen it because it's brand new, but recently a signing agent said that they are on sale nationwide and they are cheaper than the 500W. I personally have the 500W. And I'm not here trying to brag about it, but I don't know. Where is my screen? <laughs> oh, here I'm it is. Sorry, I'm laughing at you, not with you, Jay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're, you're I, all I feel the, the same noise. way. Well, I ran out of real estate on my desk because I'm working from home. Because in our office, we still have a lot of people with COVID. So I thought, I'm just going to stay on for a little longer. All right. I don't know if anybody, let me start my screen sharing. Because I'm going to share a nugget with you guys. And you're going to love me for it. All right. Jake does not have the model hands like you can see some of these salespeople do. But this is relatively small. I mean, it's not that big. This is the 500W. The 400 looks somewhat like it. The W simply means it's wireless. This allows me to take this on the road with me and do scan backs either table side or right after they sign. This has landed me direct business because they get their scans immediately, which means they get uh, funding approval from the lender quickly. And I'm not having to run back home to scan and then run back to FedEx. Usually by the time they get the scan, I might be on my way to another signing. And by the time that's done, they're like, okay, you have approval to drop the docs. It's a win-win because you just get a lot more done. Uh, but again, be conscious. I mean, if you're doing signing that's not far from your house, which Brenda will talk about later, you'll need to establish your profit zone and your radius. But I mean, th this is goals to get. This is currently about three fifty, I think, maybe more, and it's usually cheaper. I think I only spent like two fifty on it. But the new model, which is the five hundred five eighty whatever it is, you'll have to look it up. But the new one, this document feeder holds a hundred pages, whereas this model only holds 50. That's a game changer. So I might be upgrading, but you're like, well, Jake, <laughs> that requires juice and power. So most of you probably have in your dashboard, if you have a newer model car in the, like, the last decade that you can plug it in, you have an AC plug. That will not trip that. It uses only nine watts of power 
when you're under full juice mode. Uh, most cars are up to 150 watts on the AC outlet. But if you do not have one, which I have a second vehicle, my little van does not, no one's talking about this because nobody's out there trying to hustle and say, hey, what works best for our notaries? This right here is a Royobi. It's a Home Depot brand, but it's um, the power tools that are batteries. Mine are charging over here because with our storm, guess what? I can charge my devices. But you'll notice it's got the three prongs with the ground connection. This sucker online is only $60. And most of you... I just shared the link to it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, they have bigger ones and better ones, but hey, I'm less is more. If I can spend 60 bucks and if I already have the battery, now the battery might be more depending on what you get. But if you get the battery and you do not have this product line, you want to get the um, lithium ion ones. They last longer. The one that I have is the 3, 3 AMP. It's not amps, but anyway, just look for the three because that, that lasts me like a whole week and a half if I use my scanner every day. But anyways, this is, uh, yeah, you got the link, but, but uh, this has not failed me. This has been my backup. And if you are in an area, um, you know, as a backup for your phone or whatever, then you have that too. So, um, uh, you know, I've, uh, people use that, you know, during power outages and I'll, you know, I mean, it, it really is nice to have. Oh, most definitely. I meant to buy one this weekend and I have, I mean, this week and I didn't get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some questions. Tell me when we're ready to talk, take those. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we, we might be, we can do that while we're on fresh uh, with the topic. So let's go ahead. Okay. So, um, all righty. So Latoya, okay, wait, 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 we really got some questions, Jake. We got to back up here. Um, yeah. Okay. Maxine says that um, most packages have both legal and letter. And I agree with that. And so the, I don't care what anybody says online about I only print on letter. It's it's not a good idea to shrink those um, legal sizes all the time because sometimes, like in Texas, we've got to have 10 points, I believe, is the minimum. And so you shrink that down and then you're going to be getting smaller than that for those financial documents that may or may not have to go to court <laughs> And then they'll be useless if they're too small in the print. So that's one thing. Um, just printing um, the size of the paper is what it comes as. And printing on the size of the paper is better because then it's exactly like the lender or whomever intended it to be. So that's my spiel on that. Do you want to say that? I mean, say anything about that, Jake? What you see is what they should get on that PDF. I okay. would never... Yeah, do, don't do that because <clears throat> some of the these title companies have in their process flow, they're expecting if, like if they scan one document on legal size paper and everything is letter, their scanner will do everything legal size. So when we see it, we're like every page has the gap and we can tell it really should be letter. Some of our signing agents will get comfortable with that then guess what happens? That one document that's smack dab in the middle was the loan application, the 1003, and you go to the sign and it's cut off. So yeah. just whatever, however that PDF comes to you, it, it should be exactly how it's printed. And that will save you a lot of headache. And, and if you do the cost, go, go ahead. ahead. I'll say if you do the cost comparison, yes, legal is more, but when you do that one penny per page, let's just say it's just two cents a page. I mean, We're it's talking not such an impact. Yeah, yeah, it's not breaking the bank because you have to do legal versus letter. And, um, okay, if you don't have a dual tray printer and all you've got is one single tray, it, you know, if it, um, you just make sure your hiring party's okay with you printing all on legal, but that'll work. Okay. The next thing is, um, most docs are letter, though, to answer Jane's question. Um, 
Well, I had one the other day that it seemed like there were just as many of each other. Okay. Uh, Tracy's have, it says that she's not got the greatest um, internet, but she's, <laughs> she's luckily just got better. I think is what she's saying here. Two types of virus protection. He said um, malware and antivirus. And I use Sophos, S-O-P-H-O-S, because that's what Texas A&M use, uses. And, and it's good. And it doesn't, constantly bug you or take up too much of your um your memory <clears throat> so all right here's a good question <clears throat> so kim asks and i've never even thought about this suppose you got a shared office space and have internet um with the company would a person need to use to purchase their own internet and you know i've talked about take renting um uh, like a shared space in um, here in town. I think at that point you would get a VPN that should probably handle it. Would you think, would y'all think? Yeah. I use the VPN with Norton. It's like 30, 40 bucks a year and it's fabulous. It's, it gets the job done. Yeah. And then it's, it's, it's like almost like having a cell phone, which is very secure. Okay. All right. And Michelle says to everyone that the ES580W 100 sheet feeder is versus the 50. Okay. Gotcha. Is $100 off right now for brings it down to $299. That's good news. Um, okay. So I think that's it, Jake. We can move along. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Three more messages. Okay, how do we know which documents are supposed to be on legal? You will be able to tell um, by looking that you should be able to tell that one's bigger and one's smaller. If you can reduce the size of the page so that you get more than one on the uh, in your on your monitor at one time, that should probably tell you. Um, I don't know if a, uh, I'm not familiar with Adobe Reader actually. Does anybody else know the answer to that question? If so, throw it, he, throw it up here. Um, okay, yes, and Ty says, there are some title companies that, um, that request all letter. And then I have had title companies say, if you're gonna print letter, do it this way. If you're gonna print the same, you know, equal sizes, then do it this way. So I agree that, there, that some are moving to the letter type, but, you know, I'm still getting these um, documents that have actually been scanned in and they're, you know, I don't know why they do that, but they scan in the documents and send them that way. Okay, where did Michelle find the deal on the scanner? My first guess would be Amazon, but I don't know that for sure. Um, so Michelle, if you wanna tell us that, or y'all can unmute yourself too, if you want to. Um, Jake, did you hear about what I just said about hey, Brenda? Yeah. Hi there. I'm so sorry. Um, no. So thank you for for um, acknowledging my 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 um, chat. So I uh, agree with not shrinking the documents. I always thought it looked really odd, but I have two title companies that I work with now that um, they want you to send everything in letter. Um, they don't want, and I rather have legal and letter. That's how I do most of it when I'm. I'm working with the signing companies I work with, mm -hmm. but I have two title companies. They're like, no, just, you know, shrink, shrink the documents. But to me, when I go to the signings, even the signers, they're like, this is so hard to read. And it just makes me feel really uncomfortable, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what they want. So I guess that's okay. Yeah, that's what they want. You know, they're the hiring party. It's their, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, all right. I was just asking uh, how you know the size of the, the um, pages. I know how to do that in, in Adobe, but I didn't know about Adobe Reader. I mean, Acrobat, but I didn't know for sure about Adobe Reader. Um, the print, the size of the pages shows on the screen, Maxine says. I guess as you're scrolling through there, Maxine? Yeah, when you when you hit your print button, uh -huh. you can, because uh, see, I have to, because I have a two-tray thing, uh -huh. so... I have to switch because mine is not auto switch. Oh. So I have to switch from from legal to letter. But when you when it pops up on your prints 
on your print, you know, when you hit print, mm -hmm. it'll pop up and show the size of the paper. And you can tell it's that it'll say eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14. Gotcha. Okay. The Best Buy, uh, Best Buy, Office Depot and Amazon have that scanner price at that price right now. That's a sweet deal too. I believe that's it for now, Jake. We can move along. All right. Um, it's a couple of tips. You can buy refurbished equipment on Amazon, which I did not know until Brent introduced that to me. And you still get the same 30 day return period. So if you're saving quite a bit, definitely want to look that out or look it up rather. Um, slightly outdated models are often deeply discounted on newegg.com and Amazon as well. And fries. Uh, fries is not too common across the states, but I know in California and in Texas and you know, in bigger states they have that. But they're also online too. And it's fries.com. Facebook Marketplace is growing trading place uh, regarding used equipment. Um, there's a brother color printer that was $50 and Brenda's like, if nobody's going to, she uh, mentioned in our Facebook groups because it was such a good deal. She's like, if nobody gets it, you know, she was going to go get it. So I waited a week and I said, is this still up there? She said, yes. Do you want it? She goes, no, I think I'm good. And I said, okay, well, I'll mind get it. So unbeknownst to her, I did a surprise visit and surprised her while she was checking her mailbox. Like, hey girl, do you know who I am? <laughs> but anyways, I went and got that. <laughs> I went and got that color laser printer, which is a dual tray, and it was fifty bucks. The page count, which these things will go two, three, four hundred thousand or more, was only three thousand. It still has the toner of all each, you know, the four cartridges, and he gave me a hardy all metal with wheels cart where you can put the paper below it. I thought I won the lottery. It was great. Do I use that for notary docs and packages? Absolutely not. And that's why I was telling you earlier not to invest in the color laser printer as your primary means to print loan docs because the black ink cartridge usually holds a very fraction compared to the monochrome only printers. And you will just be paying so much. In fact, they're getting ready to replace that unit and if I wanted to get the Brother brand toner cartridges, it's over $500 for all four colors. Excuse me, whereas on my 6200, it's only $125 on Amazon. So another thing we didn't talk about is most of your newer models and all brands are kind of going this way. They really kind of lean to you getting their OEM cartridges. Mm -hmm. So the days of going on Amazon and spending 20 bucks, $19, the, the mechanisms, the chips, there's so much proprietary things that like brother will do that those cartridges that are aftermarket usually will blow up in the printer. They will leak toner, they'll spread, and it's going to be that one signing that you're getting paid handsomely for. And it's VIPs, it's a pro athlete. And then here you just got lives on the page. So another thing you need to factor in your cost uh, analysis is the toner cartridges that are the actual OEM. So, um, the toner is cheaper, I think, but those lease deals, they pay for the, you know, they'll charge you a certain amount and then they'll also provide toner. Right. Um, Amazon Prime, uh, you have to be a member for at least a year and in good standing. Uh, with COVID, I haven't really come across it because I, I don't know why, but, um, but for a while, they do it randomly. If you see it, you need to, to take up the offer, but they allow you, it's not a layaway because layaway you have to pay and build up and then you get it. Basically, they let you get it within your prime period. So if you like the scanner, my extra brother I have here that I just showed you, I got it on sale. I did that. They take your first payment plus the tax out. And then for five months, I got to pay it out. And that was allowed, that allowed me to duplicate my home office with my, you know, office office. So, um, but they do that randomly and they offer it on the Apple products like the iPads, they offer it on certain, you know, electronics, but if it's there one night, it may not be there the next, but if you see that, that might be a very efficient way of building your um, equipment. 
Um, there are other trade and selling platforms and apps. Ultimately, you need to be very careful. Keep security in mind. We are in 2021. We'll just leave it at that. And um, needed a very uh, high trafficked area that's public if you are meeting people like from a Cardi and things like that. So, all right. I know we're a little over an hour behind, but we're going to make up for that here in a little we're, bit. We are pros at that. So don't you worry right. about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, and my uh, screen just switched. So Barbara King, I just now saw you for the first time. Nice to meet you. She's in uh, Plano, I believe, right? She's in the area. And so thank you for coming. She uh, is really good friends with uh, some people that we all have mutual friends and connections. So glad to have you. Um, the notary yeah, stamps. Um, now we put the stamp up there because let's just call it. It is what it is, a stamp, right? But uh, it's really your seal, not a stamp, but we're okay. We're not going to be the vocabulary police on you. Um, you need to make sure before you buy any, or especially as a backup, that you know what the rules and requirements are. Uh, if you go through NNA or the American Association of Notaries, they obviously know the requirements, so you're okay there. But it's probably not a good idea to go to your local print press company, Office Depot, things like that, because they don't know what they are. Um, if your state allows you to get a backup and Brenda knows that one state and I'm going to say it's either Idaho or Iowa. Which one? Oh, about the backup of the stamp. Right. right. Um, California does not allow, um, you to have one with, I mean, you can't just go get another one because you've got to present the certificate, a certificate issued to you. It's special. And if there's anybody from California that wants to tell me then, I mean, that wants to pipe up, that'd be great. But that's the only state that I am sure of, um, Arizona. I think both of those states really don't get to have a backup stamp. I, I have more than one backup stamps. I was gonna do a quick true story. So I usually have the basic colors, like the case on the outside. Um, I'm like, that's boring, you know, I have a lot of personal items on my desk and year end and, you know, tax time, my stamps would just blend in with the desktop. So I went and got the neon colors. I don't know if my camera's on. It's probably not. Mm. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, nice. I got the neon colors and these are from the American Association of Notaries. Um, I, one stamp would last me my four-year term in Texas, so that's how hard they are. And as an escrow officer, I would do on average five loan packages a day, day in, day out. And so, I mean, these would just last. But if you want something funny, so one's neon orange, one is neon yellow. The other day, I was, I was trying to look for this, one, so I couldn't find it. Remember, I was showing you my little toy here? It blended in. I never mm -hmm. saw it. I'm like, well, all right, Jake, that defeated the purpose. But anyways, these are very hardy and they're the Trodat. I don't know if that matters or not. If you have the option of a Trodat. Um, they're also removable ink pads. So you can change the colors. Um, all right. And again, we don't get any in royalties or anything from mentioning them. That's just on our own personal recommendation. All right. Black and blue ink are widely accepted as far as the ink color on the case. You can get whatever you want to. They've got uh, animal prints. They've got charity cases and so forth. But that, that's you, up to you. Um, Utah, apparently you can't use a certain color. Let me. Uh... Yeah, you can only use purple in Utah. And in Tennessee, you can use any color but yellow. Oh, <laughs> Um. I would just recommend that whatever ink color you get and you're allowed to have that it's at least dark enough so that when you do scan backs or if anyone were to make a photocopy down the road, that it is legible when it's being reproduced. And anyone in Texas, that's actually a state law requirement. Yeah. And we can have red seals and there. That would be perfectly fine, except that it really, I think it, it makes banks and I mean, lenders and title companies kind of, shiver when they see it um in texas i'm just i guess my point is stay with black blue or a dark purple that's what i would do hey and don't uh, yeah. don't try to use like rainbow colors like you know blue black red green um 
no brownie points. In fact, if your document ever gets attacked and it goes to a judge, he's not going to, he's going to frown. So if someone had a question. Yes, I had did my stamp and I did the green, the green lime green for the outside and didn't know I also did the ink also green. So would I need to get another stamp? Not necessarily. If did you go through notary or a Texas notary dot com? Uh, the a a n right right okay yes. that green is a little dark so it's reproducible and that would be fine. Um, when you can, I would probably get a backup stamp in either blue or black, just in case any particular hiring party says anything. But it it's legit. But the green, because I've seen that on some people, it's it's fine. It's not a distraction, but just on your backup, I would go a different color just to be safe. Okay. But hey, green's money. We like green. No, I, ha I have a green one too. A All green, right. Purple so and blue. Excuse me. Go All ahead. Right. <laughs> Ultimately, you guys want to safeguard your seal. Um, many states, that's going to be an actual uh, statutory requirement. It is in Texas, um, but it's it's also best practice because anyone could take this, you know, steal it, and you probably have a good chance with your journal saying, hey, I'm not that someone stole it and did some a lot of wrongdoings, but guess what? You're still spending your own money that you'll probably never recoup defending yourself when all you had to do was put this in your desk and lock it, um, you know, so don't leave this in your car overnight. Don't do those crazy things. All right. Your journal, even if it's not required, again, we strongly recommend that you do have one. Always get an extra journal because you will run out of space, especially as a signing agent, because you'll need more real estate space in your journal. So you don't want to be without one. Keep your journals in a sequential order as much as possible. So even though your, K your notary stamp may be... Uh, you know, have a lot of, you know, diff maybe you've got cheetah print, maybe uh, breast cancer awareness in October, it's pink, um, which are great. But in your journals, they make journals for the same type of causes and styles and likings. But the problem is, is you don't want to use your hot pink journal and then in November switch to something that's got fallen leaves and then you recycle them the following year. Because if your records are ever uh, being requested or are under attack, a judge or a defense attorney would have a heyday, in my opinion, of course, uh, and non-legal opinion, by the way, um, that they have to sort through and you call so much legwork, it almost seems it invites them to critique you on something that's not even relevant to the issue at hand. And they just further just attack and attack and attack. But if you can say, okay, here's my 10 journals from last year. Uh, this one at the outside and what I do on mine, I take a permanent marker and I write one dash and then the year and then two dash year, three dash, and not for the month, but just saying this was journal number one, 2020. This is journal two and so on when I do that. All right. Um, we recommend you keep your journal indefinitely. Some states have a statutory requirement as far as how long you need to keep them, uh, but it's always best practice to hold on to them forevermore. And obviously you want to safeguard it just as much as you would your seal because it is your evidence of notarial acts. Pens, this is a little different when we wrote this, but obviously for your signers, you know, whatever pen you can afford to let them keep because you really don't want to get that back. And if you sanitize it, that's just my, my opinion. But um, if they have their favorite pen, just make sure it's the same color that's required by your state or your hiring party. Some states in the upper Northeast, it's mandatory in real estate documents that it's black ink. In my state, there is no requirements, but blue usually governs. But if I'm, let's just say Rhode Island, hypothetically, is black ink. If I am handling a signing where the property is in Rhode Island, my instructions will say black ink, no exceptions then you need to have a black ink in your supply. So we recommend stocking up with a ratio of 80% blue, 20% black. Um, Non-fine tip pens work best. Uh, be conscious of pricing. I mean, you might have one that you love. Um, the one that I have does tend to smear and I'm left-handed, but I've kind of worked around it. But I like it because I have a doctor's signature and when I'm notarizing, it's just better flow to go. Uh, so for me personally, I invest good money into my pens, but if you were to do any for branding and they're, you know, it's not going to each out a house and home to give that as a souvenir, then that might be a good thing to do. Well, you, you definitely want to start thinking about your brand, which uh, Brenda will talk about later. Um, 
we do like bold tips because when you do scan backs, they work really, really well. Um, in fact, I'm looking at mine here. I, if you want to write this down really quick, um, paper mate profile 1.4 be as a boy. And I could probably type that here in our chat. Oh, we like to write while you dictate. Oh, you got that? Are you already? Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm just being ugly to you. <laughs> now, these are a little expensive. I mean, you can buy them in bulk. They're like $12 or $15, so about a dollar a pen. But they write so smooth. Everyone used to say, hey, can I keep your pen? Now, back in the day, I'm like, well, oh, I made so much for this signing, but whatever. Just kidding. Um, but I've just always found these are good conversational little instruments. And when I do scan backs, they are so clear that, you know, if you just do the cheap stick pens, they don't show up. And then guess what? We can't read your scans. We need you to redo it. I'm like, all right. So that was kind of my solution. For me personally, if you're a pen snob, I am. I have no problem in that. Um, okay, it's Paper Mate, Profile, and uh, Bold. Oh, I'm sorry. I accidentally uh, put in a direct message instead of... <laughs> let, me, let me get off of that. Let's see. I think it's what he said. Okay, that's my pen, the Uniball. Okay. The other one is the uh, Papermate Profile. Let's see. Okay, Papermate is the one I usually have the signers do. But right now, I'm not going to lie to you, I do have the cheap stick pens. Uh, if I'm out doing them among the current times, because I want them to keep it. And what I do is I adjust my scanner settings a little bit. Uh, to where it's not a big memory hog, but at least it'll pick it up. Um, but everyone's scanner is different. You're going to have to play with that. And if you just see it's not picking it up, you might have to go and invest in a bolder pen. All right. Jay, um, sure. Can I ask a quick question? If it's not you question are. time, that's fine. Okay. I, um, I have a question uh, going back to the journal. It, it's related to using a journal. Now I'm in Florida. They don't require journals here in Florida, but I use my journal anyway. Um, how would you handle, um, recently I forgot to have uh, the signer sign my journal, never done that ever before. So I don't know how I forgot to get the signature, but how would you handle that? You would just go back and say, hey, can you sign this? I forgot to have you sign this um, during our visit or is that appropriate? Your state laws, so if a journal's not required in Florida, then you could probably just casually just say, hey, just, you know, when you guys have free time, can I swing by and get that sign? Because that would be good. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, you could even put a note in there just saying, you know, signature omitted or whatever. And oh. our state, we're not, the, the signatures is great, but a person can refuse and they don't have to sign it. However, we're required to have a journal regardless. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you in passing, but if it's like a week or a month ago, it's, I probably wouldn't inconvenience the signers. Um, but definitely maybe put a note on there, just, you know, signature omitted or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, but that's, thank you for having a journal. Cause that's really <laughs> going to be CYA for you. Yeah, it really is. Thank you. You bet. For toner, always have dependable backup cartridges, um, three brother printers ago when I used them, I could get the cheap $25 one and, and save money. But I had to buy several from different sellers because one would be, you know, a bad toner, but I had backups. So you never want to be in that position to where you don't have that. And again, be aware that newer manufacturers or newer printer models, the manufacturers may require OEM brands. Um, and then also the aftermarket may void the warranty. We found that's not so much the case because I know they got a lot of hot water just trying to read some national articles. But nonetheless, let's just assume that's the case. So just be very careful. Paper, you need a letter in legal size. It's always good to have three reams at any given time. So when you are low, you at least have some to back up on, especially legal size paper. This last year, I believe it was Georgia Pacific went out of business. So legal just shot up in price and it was hard to find. So 
you might actually want to have maybe, you know, a full case to back up. Um, but anyways, regular copy paper quality is fine. Don't buy the thick stock. Don't, don't buy the brightest and the widest of them all. Um, just a general copy is fine. Uh, because when you start getting things that are too thick, it, it will jam your uh, laser printer. So, but again, shop around. The deals change often. I mean, we could say, hey, go today. And then tomorrow, the, you know, staples or whatever could be no longer having the sale. As far as your supply, stationary supplies, binder clips, mostly medium sized. You would want to return that package with that on there. Um, do not rubber band unless it's, you know, many packages. Um, and please never ship a closing package, just stuff in an envelope because it will shift, it'll tear, and your hiring party will not be pleased with you. And remember, since I'm a hiring party, some people have dings, not from me necessarily, but I'll go on their profile and I'm like, because I give everyone a chance, right? So I'll look at it, it's like, we received two closing packages back and they rubber banded them and it tore the piece of paper, never use again. I'm like, really? So when I hire that person, I'm like, look, make sure you use a binder clip, don't use whatever. Um, so there could be petty stuff out there. And that's one I've seen a couple of times. So use binder clips. Tape would be essential. Sometimes you're getting a voided check when they want their payment ACH'd on a refi, or if they are a seller and they're getting proceeds back or even a, ref, a refi getting proceeds back, they may want a voided check. And the form specifically states, tape your check here. Paper clips, you might want to keep the, well, you need to, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to take your closing amount that you're collecting and putting that on top with the CD, but paper clipping. Don't ever staple any funds to any document. I know some signing agents do that, but it's a pain because if they are so busy and they throw it through the scanner, then it, it shreds the CD, it shreds the cashier's check. And depending on the state and the type of lending institution, some of those forms of payment are not easy just as a swipe. And, you know, okay, we'll avoid this and whatever. So just a uh, paper clip. Uh, Post-it notes or sticky flags. We recommend that when you're first starting out, like the Fab Five, or if there's anything that the instructions specifically told you, hey, we need you to, you know, document this. Um, I know some people want to flag everything that the signer needs to do. And I guess that's okay, more and more accept in the current times, just so you don't have to do less paper shuffling among the pandemic, but you do need to make sure all of them are removed before you send that closing package back. That annoys the heck out of title companies when they're having to do that themselves. Absolutely no whiteout products or highlighters whatsoever. FedEx and UPS are the most utilized carriers among title companies. I, for some reason, feel that FedEx is probably 90%. UPS is still in there, but uh, UPS is uh, Amazon Prime for me. Um, but you should look into opening accounts under each of the carrier for free supplies and it'll allow you to create a label in case you are provided the account number to bill it to. One burning question I know someone's getting ready to ask is, do we have to pay for that? No, usually you don't. I've never had to unless it was an error. Usually they're going to provide you a prepaid label in your documents and you just print it out and then you just stuff it in the envelope or the case on the outside. Uh, go ahead and stock up with both poly packs and letter and legal envelopes. The poly packs are like the plastic vinyl ones. Um, they give you best weather protection, especially now. Um, if it's documents I know that are just, you know, sensitive and they've had issues, I will probably put it in a legal size FedEx and then seal it and then put it inside of a poly pack. If there's like inclement weather, I do that just as an extra precaution. Um, familiarize yourself with the latest drop-offs, especially now in the Dallas Fort Worth area, they actually kept the same time. It's 10 o'clock at the, uh, Dallas Fort Worth airport, but the hubs went from eight 30 to maybe six o'clock drop boxes, especially if you're in a remote area, they're picking up eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning when it used to be one, two or three and four. And there's no guarantee that the FedEx driver would pick up. And then now when I say remote, and FedEx Dropbox is your only option, and your hiring party is aware you're dropping it off in a Dropbox, you would want to take a picture where you dropped it off, and on your phone, make sure you have GPS enabled. So that picture, it has you know exactly the date and time and the geo reference. Now, with that said, and I'm going to talk about it later, but I'm going to tell you right now, 
If you're in a market that has UPS store, a UPS hub, FedEx office, or a FedEx hub, whatever, you must always use them first because you need to get a receipt. You're passing on that chain of command saying, okay, I've done my job. Now it's on to FedEx. If FedEx loses it, hey, I got a receipt. I did my due diligence. So um, hiring parties are going to preach for that. You should never just drop it off at a drop box just because it's convenient on the way to your next signing. Because if that gets lost or there's a flood or there's a car that runs into it on the ice and it's everywhere, personally, I'm going to hold you liable for a breach of NPI, which is non-public information. Uh, but again, if I'm in the middle of nowhere and I decided to take this signing six counties over and they're paying me three thousand dollars, well, I would probably hand deliver that back in a big market. But if that was the only option, I would get approval from the hiring party and they say yes, and I'll take a picture and I'll upload that picture to the portal or whoever they are and email it saying, okay, this is where it's at. So, but anyways, familiarize yourself with those drop times. And again, airports and regional hubs do tend to have uh extended hours. Um, okay, I guess the third party occur are the services um, or outlets. So um, the latest pickup times, again, are hubs and airports. Uh, it's always better to use actual courier owned locations to issue receipts when you drop off. Uh, in a lot of the Walmart uh, locations across the country, they now have a mini FedEx and it's a legit FedEx office. So it's not like a third party in my experience. I've been to a few and I've never had a problem. I got a receipt and it was picked up and, and moving right along. Um, where you should not deliver your package to is Office Depot, Walgreens. I know like Dollar General and these you know discount locations offer that. I am telling you now, it is almost without a, a doubt that every time one of my notaries drops those off, it is never picked up. And we had one that was at a Walgreens, I think. And the person, the clerk had scanned it into the, the system, gave a receipt, but it didn't get picked up. Why? FedEx and these uh, UPS, they are allowed to, in their terms of service, not have allegiance to their third party, non-company owned drop-off locations because they're short staffed. So that's one reason. But this one, they come every day. The guy just didn't get it. Guess what they do with the loan documents? They put it in the shelf behind them where people decide they don't want something. And it was in the little bin for it to be put back on the shelf when they finally realize it's a FedEx and not product. Let's just leave it there. I always live it because that jeopardizes the hiring party, the title company, and CFPB violations. So again, do not use those entities. Uh, and again, if you get pre-approval and if that is your only resort, the exception to the rule is you told somebody you have proof you've dropped it off, then hey, you've done your CYA. Let's close this section out. Let's go ahead and talk about some quick action items. You want to research your printer and scanner cost, and then you want to uh, compare them online or wherever you may purchase from. Make a list of all the supplies you need to order uh, and research the cost of those supplies. Set up a file to keep your receipts in, whether you do this digitally and then you have a special folder or if you um, if you um, have like a, an accordion style thing, because these are write offs and your tax advisor would, would really appreciate you doing that. Go ahead and set up overnight carrier accounts to take advantage of free supplies and have them delivered directly to your door. And if you ever need to create a label, you can do so without having to go and stand in line. Uh, and then scout the latest pickup locations in your area. So let's go ahead and stop the recording. And this next section, Miss Brenda, is all yours.